Today, the influence of Black Americans can be heard in music everywhere. But did you know that for decades, enslaved people in America used the sounds of traditional African music to rise up against the brutal slave system? South Carolina, September 9th. Near the banks of the Stono River, 20 enslaved men gather, intent on breaking free of the violent exploitation of plantation life. Knowing that they can't do it without self-protection, they take the lives of two innocent storekeepers and steal their guns. Then make their way south, using instruments and coded sounds to draw others to their cause. The noise alerts some local plantation owners who ride out on horseback to halt their progress. A bloody battle ensues. Approximately 60 people are killed. In the aftermath, white lawmakers in South Carolina pass the Negro Act of 1740, which takes away what little civil liberties enslaved people had, making it illegal for them to congregate in groups or use drums for any reason. But the Negro Act does not silence enslaved people. Instead, they find new ways to communicate, using their bodies to tap out rhythms, foot stomping, hand clapping, and tap dancing to share coded messages using sounds instead of words. And the ring shout is a way to express their collective frustration with slavery. The Stono Rebellion was the largest slave uprising to take place anywhere across the 13 colonies. And although it ultimately failed, it showed that enslaved people were not as compliant as once thought. In turn, the Negro Act forced black people to innovate. And the sounds they created are still being heard today. What can we learn about hard-hitting historical events like the Stono Rebellion?